Well, hello there and welcome back. My name is Elena. And I'm Fodios and this is the Game Court. And we're finally doing the quarterly look back. The new games to us that we played the last quarter, that is April, May and June of 2023. Shall we give it a go? Let's give it a go. Shall, shall I first mention that we played more the games than what we're discussing here? I thought it this? says in the name, new to us, right? Yes, we played way many more games, like the old to us. <laughs> um, yeah, we play a lot of games though, but these ones are the ones that we've played and they're recent to us that we've never played and they're not all new games, they might be older games that, you know, people mainly forget about uh, but we like to mention them because all games are awesome yes. and we like experiencing... Exper experiencing... Experi ex experiencing... experiencing... <laughs> is the subtitle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> new games! Well, I hope um, that is fine. We like experiencing uh, quirky, unique, innovative games as well. So it might be that it's a very little game that we've played or it's a very um, new game <laughs> of some sort. Anyway, and the, and the first game in the, uh, in the list is uh, Barras. We tried it for the first time early April and uh, it's an interesting manufacturing game. And if you want to watch Barrage, uh, how well, our official opinion and our extended opinion, you're going to find the link down below. No, no. Or there. Up there. Or there. Oh, it's up here. It's for sure up here. We just discovered how yes. to put that thing on. <laughs> it's up here. It's up going here. to come up somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go with this angle, but it might not be. <laughs> so, Baraz is a little manufacturing game where you try to build your dams to collect water, to produce energy, and basically to outperform your uh, the other companies. That do technically the same, the same thing. thing. <laughs> and you have to fight for the water, you have to uh, put your conduits uh, strategically so that other players can use it and you get money, basically. <laughs> And, uh, Stop the flow for other people. Yes. Oh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, oh yes, exactly. Still Stop, the, Stop yeah. the flow for other people. Yes. <laughs> and it's a worker placement game, so it has this. Uh, you can go to a spot, but if you want to go to the same spot, you have to pay for it or go with more workers or both. It's a tight game, very tight. It's right up our street. Yes, and by the way, really this was like one it. of your suggestions, guys. So thank you, thank you very much for that. It it's was a, awesome. It's a very, very good game. We really enjoyed it and it's definitely staying in our collection. Um, and then we played, played... What's wrong with me today? Is this like a theme of me, maybe? Never mind. And then we played Riverside. And Riverside is a uh, Rolling Right game that was my uh, gift. Thank you very much. Um, it was Lena's birthday. It was my birthday yes, in, in April, April and yeah. I got a gift and this was one of them. I don't... I, I got more gifts, but this yes. is one of them. I, buy, I bought here something more. <laughs> something, something Never mind, yeah. that's not the point. But also so, I get from my friend Riverside of is a really run and write game and it's... Oh, it might, might be one to four. I'm not entirely sure how long you played. I, I, Technically yeah. you are Actually, on a river... To, one to six, I can read from here. It's one to six. Please. One to six. Mm. Well, it's a very nice roll and ride, and technically you have a you are on a river cruise um, somewhere up north. It's all icy and it's all cold. And what you technically do is you try to draw people onto your boat to go on the cruise, and then mainly you sell tickets for excursions, like to see the penguins or the reindeers or you know the glaciers and stuff like that. So technically, that's what you do, right? Yeah, and you collect points and you try to drop off the passengers, and you try to also, if you do the same excursions, to do them better and bigger every time you do them. It's a very cool game, very, and we very like nice. It very much. Yeah, that's Riverside. And then we played The Pursuit of Happiness. Such we... a such a quirky game, isn't it? I mean, we played it at four as well, so it was quite entertaining. It's basically a simulation of life, I would say. Correct. You, like, you know, yeah. overly simplified simulation of life. You pick up cards, which are projects or activities or hobbies. And they all have degrees. like funny names as well. Yeah. Don't they? <laughs> and you progress through them, you, like you you um, advance through these projects if you wish. Mm. I remember I had the whiskey collection mm. or something like that. So technically, what you do is you're an individual, a male or a female, and you literally. Get, go through your life. The game yes. just takes you through your life. You find where a partner. You find a, a partner that you can, you know, you can marry if anything, because you have to, you have to upgrade to actually marry your partner. Isn't and it? some of the partners need need money. Some of them need love. Yeah. Some, some of them both. want children. Some yeah. of them come with children. Yes, yes. You have a job. You can change your job if you want to. You can get promotions in your job. You can get you can hobbies. Retire. You can you get stress mm -hmm. through life. Stress kills yeah. you faster. And at the end of the day, everybody dies. <laughs> it's such a, such a unique game. It's funny, isn't it? Yes. yes. Very nice. Very, very nice. entertaining. The next one we played is Hit Petal 
Pet, 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 petal to the metal. <laughs> petal, petal to the metal. <laughs> That's normally yes. my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has an amazing racing game. It's actually very new and most of you must have heard about it. Um, it's very nicely integrated in the theme, obviously. You have to manage your cards and some of the cards represent the heat of the car and how much you push your car. You basically push your engine, yeah. push your engine, push your car to the limits and uh, you have to manage this appropriately to go through turns faster or to accelerate more and so on and so forth. So you can win the race. Technically it's, you just yeah. need to win the, win the race and you can play with the simple version of the cards which the game comes with mm -hmm. or you can play with the more upgraded cards which the game comes with and you can you know do different combinations like weather warnings and stuff like that isn't it? And even if you play by yourself if, or at two this game is good because you can easily play with Automa. Automa works so well doesn't Very it? It's nice. so easy Very to follow nice. as well. And then we went to our local store and mm -hmm. we were just browsing as we usually do and we found Corrosion and it had an amazing price, didn't yeah. it? Like dirt cheap and we were like, we don't know much about this game but let's give but it a try. Should buy it. <laughs> it looks industry, it looks manufacturing. Yeah, 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 just ticked it all looks, the boxes. Yeah, yeah. So technically what you should do in Corrosion is, I think it's some sort of like factory that you're in and you have... The machines. The machines yes. that have gears mm -hmm. and technically you're meant to move these gears you know at an appropriate time for them not to rust and corrode, not corrode yes. that's the whole idea behind the game and you do have a wheel in the middle you know what you attach stuff to it mm. um, but you have a wheel in the middle and as it turns it gives you different benefits mm -hmm. you don't want to turn it too fast because then you lose some benefits you don't want to turn it too slow because it corrodes and then you start losing the benefits mm. that's kind of the idea behind it well, the game was alright. Mm. It didn't stay in a collection. Yeah. I mean, we played once or twice. I think uh, we had fun with it, but uh, I feel like the. Yeah. I mean, the theme, like the way I say it, so it just sounds like wow, such an amazing game. You produce and you do this and the other. I just feel like you know, it doesn't really. It was stand a bit up to its theme. It was a bit yeah. repetitive at yeah. some point. Yeah. You just yes. need a bit of something yeah. else at one point in there. Uh, the next one we tried, uh, actually I tried this month, was uh, a Kickstarter. It was Legacy of You, a game in the ancient uh, anthology of the Garfield games, the same anthology that has the Raiders of Scythia and also Handrian's Wall. And uh, Legacy of You is a solo only game. It's a campaign game where as you go through it, you uh, the, the campaign becomes harder or easier based on if you win or if you lose. So it's a, it adapts itself Catch over up time. Mechanism exactly. now. <laughs> and you have a good placement again. You have resource management, a lot of resource management. You try to fight the barbarians and at the same time build your canals to win the game. It's a pretty cool game, and at some point I may convince Elena to play together like a, a cooperative. Yeah. I don't really play solo games by yeah. myself normally. I mean, we we tried we tried. Friday, Friday at one yes, point yes. we took it together because I didn't understand how Friday worked and then we played it together although it's not really considered solo but I did play one solo game. Uh, uh, Friday is solo, yes. Yeah, but we played it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. good enough I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we finally convinced Fotis to learn the rules <laughs> of the Asian railroads from the Ultimate Railroads mm. and it's not really a you know standalone game but it is fairly different. Yes, we consider it a different game, the same way Brass Birmingham and Brass Lancaster are different games. Mm. Kind of I the think, same different, yeah. Yeah, I think Russian Railroads, obviously the original one, then we had German Railroads, which were an expansion on Asian Railroads, on Russian Railroads, <laughs> and then the big box game, which had inside the American Railroads. Which we have Asian not played Railroad. yet. <laughs> yes, we haven't played American Railroads. Well, you but, know, it's very exciting to have uh, new games and learn those first. <laughs> but the Asian Railroad, it, it feels very different. I it mean, does. it's the same game, the same engine, the same amazing combinations, work placement. You do one thing and then you do another, and five minutes after you finish your turn, it's but very it, satisfying. Yeah, I think that what makes it different, the, uh, the this Asian. Asian one compared to the Russian yeah. one, for yeah. example, is that it has this commonality of uh, Common element factory, yes. where the, the factory, the purple mm. uh, factory, which normally stands at the bottom of your n normal you don't play board. player board, mm. this time it's common, so it's common for everybody. Everybody does the same round on the same one. So mm. if you want to go further, as you would unlock it with a different factory beforehand, a factory tile, if you unlock it, you have to make sure that you know the benefit is not incredible because everybody that will pass by will get yes, it too. Yes, yes. So if you unlock it first, you just have to be mm. mindful, mm. which I think gives it a bit of a different touch. I like yeah. that very much. 
And next we played the Perilous Pond, and Perilous Pond, which we have here, by the way, right here. It's not a game that has been released yet. I think it will be on Kickstarter very soon. So we received a preview copy from the publisher and we gave it a spin or two or three or four. I don't even know how many yeah. though, because it's. I, I think it was one of those games that you play it once and you're like, you know, you don't really have much, like the box is so, the box is so little and it doesn't like, you know, you're like, meh, you know, it's just a little box. And then you play it and you're like, hmm, what was yes. that all about? And then you play it again yeah. and you're like, oh, I can't believe I lost. <laughs> well, it, it, it is a bit of take that a bit of a Yaji style rolling. Uh, we, we like some uh, luck in it, but yeah, you know, we like that. At some point, we like throwing some dice as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fun game. Yes. It's a fun game. Where basically you have your frog and try to collect, uh, to, to catch fireflies. And uh, run away from the, jump well, away from the pike. pike. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, if you want to see our review, I think it's going to be there. Or there, I'm probably going to stop doing this because it's entertaining and I cannot be or, doing anything or else. Or going to hit me at some point. <laughs> or there. <laughs> <laughs> well, follow the link somewhere. It's going to be about somewhere. <laughs> and then we played Lofoten, which was part of your game, your gift. Yeah, my gift, my birthday yes, gift. Yes, his birthday is in April as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we managed to match, but that's that. Um, so Lofoten is a two-player only game as well. And it's quite interesting. It has a different, unique... It's very unique... Um, mechanic that I've not seen anywhere so far. Maybe you've seen it and maybe we've not, you know, looked around for too much, but for us it's quite new. So technically you're a Viking and you have your Viking ships um, and what you do is you sail across, it's more like a sail I would say, isn't it? Where you mm -hmm. get your boat and you, you can sail left and right and you can rotate your ship yes, as well yes, yes. to accommodate the uh, cargo, cargo yeah, that is in the middle. So your opponent sits away from you when you sit in front of your opponent and your boat moves this way and then your boat can spin as well so you can as you spin it your cargo can move into your boat yes, as well yes, yes. and then you can deliver it and then technically it's about pickup and delivery mm -hmm. and uh, yes whoever collects the most in a particular warehouse will get the point for that warehouse which mm -hmm. is also a cool aspect of the game it's a it's a, it's a fun uh, and unique card management and card playing game and mm -hmm. how you rotate and move it's yeah it's, that's how you use exactly. your, you use cards to actually you know do the movement you the do your left card to move left or the right card to move right or to spin right yes yeah, to, to spin clockwork uh, clockwork interesting yeah. game very, very interesting yeah the next game we tried is uh, called quinto and uh, so i was watching this video from uh, another board game channel called thinker Thimmer, and they were presenting different roll and write games and then they present quinto and uh, we have quicks in our collection and we like quicks a lot. And then uh, uh, they presented to the Quinto and I, I said to myself, this must be very, very interesting. It's basically a combination of Welcome To series, of Roll and Write series, and quicks. And uh, when I said it to Elena, I, I want to buy Quinto, and she was like, do we really need this? Do we need another? <laughs> yes, another yeah, one. Yeah, another one. That looks exactly the same as the other 10 that we yeah, bought. Exactly. Spot. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't buy it, but I found some uh, files on BDG website so we print them off to see how it plays and it's amazing it's better than quicks easy it's uh, i would say better than the basic welcome to not, not i th i, th I find yeah. that it's better not, i find not, that it's better better than the welcome to the moon base i would say but it technically plays with three dice it plays with three dice three dice and you decide how many you actually throw you can throw one color two colors or all three colors at once and you sum them up and you sum them up and if you for example only play red and yellow you have red yellow and purple or blue something like that so if you let's say you throw red and yellow then the number that you get you have to put in red or yellow correct if you only throw a purple, for example, then that's the that's the place where you have to put them. The, so the, it's the fair, fairly explanatory, really. Fair, yes, fair but good. it's how you actually place the numbers. It's very smart, very smart. And yeah. when you roll the dice, your opponent can get the number and use it as well if yeah. they want to, which makes it even trickier. Because mm. do you want to keep a number that is good for your opponent all the time? Not really. Do you, you risk it. Yes, yes, you yeah, it. it's a very cool game. Very, very little, but super, nice super uh, enjoyable. And then we had a gaming session and we finally played Revive, although we would have, we should have played it when Age we played ago. absolutely everything else with mm. the Woodcraft, with Tilitum. I think that was the generation of the games. Yes. It all came in that pack, but we didn't, we didn't play it, but we played it now and I'm glad that we did. So um, Revive is quite an interesting game. You're technically 
trying to revive the planet that has been frozen a gazillion years ago and you're trying to explore the frozen planet by you know mapping does it have hexes i think it's hexes isn't it on the main map so what you technically do you try to build on those hexes and just explore and expand the frozen area technically yeah um i mean i'm happy we played it but equally um i don't think uh, the game worth its hype i would say but this is luckily opinion, yeah. we just tried it now and it just happened that it was not necessarily for us yeah and it's not because it's a bad game but i no, find it's that a good game mm, i find the most unique part of this game i think it's this tech tree mm. i would call it a tech tree it's not really tech tracks three, 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 tracks. Tech, three, tech three tracks three tracks three tracks yeah. yeah three tracks yeah. that normally go in like a spiral kind of thing doesn't yeah, they it intersect at some point as yeah. well yeah i found that a little bit on the confusing side so technically as you go around the tracks mm -hmm. you can get benefits like any other track but in this in this case some of them will intertwine and you have to get at i don't know level two yellow and level seven green i'm not even entirely sure but that's just an example to actually unlock that benefit and you can place you know there has a little circle in there that you can remove if you do manage to get the bonus but if you don't get the bonus because you need to unlock it twice you have to f slide it towards what you've not unlocked and it's just not clear enough yes and it's all like such a jumble i'm like i'm not even sure you know what is the best route to get the better to the better combos it seems to be the unique selling point of the game and at the same time it's the the point of the game is that is the element of the game that for mm. us didn't really work. I mean, I like the other, the rest of the game, but I just found that bit too confusing. The card game is fine, right? But yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think... Uh, it's a good game, but not a great game, I yeah. would say. The next one we played is Prodigal's Club by Vladimir Shuchi. And uh, you let, say me, it now. let me do this. <laughs> uh, we have a, a video up here for you guys if you want to see our a video on the Prodigal's Club, which was our game of the month the previous month, for May, I think, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And it's about uh, being gentlemen in uh, England, and uh, we are born sure. with a high life. So sure. <laughs> what we decide to do is to go wild and uh, lose everything. Go rogue and, and yes. you know, so we, rebel. We want to uh, give out our possessions for basically pennies. We want to lose our votes, to lose our friends. And basically, the win of the game is who, the one that has the less, mm, that loses in most. All of these competitions, basically, um, very fun game. Mm. Yeah, very a, unique game very as well. Game. The card play is very nice. I really like how the card play works. The art is very pretty the as well. Pretty, yeah, a yeah, bit yeah, yeah. cheeky, isn't yes, it? Yes, very nice. Um, you, the board is very unique as mm -hmm. well. I mean, the way it's it's constructed is unique compared to other boards. It's not just a standard board. And also, I think the fact that it goes backwards rather than instead of constructing, you're destroying, you're destroying everything. Exactly, exactly. It just gives it a different vibe, really. The mm. game is not the heaviest, but it's nonetheless it's a very hilarious. enjoyable game. Uh, and then we played Corinth. Corinth is designed by the same guy as uh, Jaipur. Yes, I love Jaipur. <laughs> yeah, but Corinth is another Royal Wright game. We like our Royal Wright, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, what do we do in Corinth? We collect goods. I'm not beans, sure. I don't, soaps. Think, I don't think Corinth has a particular like apart from the fact that the you know the art is there because it's drawn that way. I I think it could have been any other. It has, it has something though. It has donkeys. It has donkeys and it has coins. <laughs> it has coins, yeah. yeah. It has coins and donkeys. <laughs> it's a fun game. I really like it. I mean, it's just a simple, simple rin and ride. Exactly, exactly. It's good to just check in your bag whenever yeah. you go on holiday and you have to wait 15 years. It's a fast one. It's a 15 minute game. Fast, fast, fast. Yeah, Giving only thing is that you have to have a lot of dice with it. Twelve. <laughs> Nine white, three yellow. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm guessing you can improvise if anything, yeah. but a lot of dice for this game. But it's nonetheless a nice game. And then we had another Kickstarter delivery. It's a small box game. It's called Isle of Trains All Aboard, which is a re-implementation of the older game Isle of Trains. And uh, it's a very small game where you basically you build your train, you can upgrade your engine, you can uh, have more uh, cars in the train, passenger cars, cargo cars, and so on and so forth, uh, which uh, do uh, very nice stuff. You can uh, pick up and deliver your passengers, you can uh, pick up and deliver uh, goods and calls, take contracts and stuff like that. It, it has multi-use cards. It, it is very multi-use cards. cards. Exactly. The cards are quite impressive, aren't yeah, they? It can, it can, how you use the cards is very nice. Mm -hmm. um, you can use them as coins to pay for other cars. You can use them as cargo. It's it's it's, it's a nice game. Pretty it's versatile. Nice game. Mm -hmm. I want to play again for sure. Yeah, but and I think the. Sorry, yeah. I didn't finish. All right, sorry. <laughs> 
the art as well is very pretty and the production in this what is the company that pr produced it uh, i think it's called dranda games dranda games dranda games did a fantastic job with with how the game is actually made yes very pretty and very uh, attentive to details as well very nice now i finished <laughs> okay i will play again <laughs> the next game we played is art robbery and it's a game designed by a guy called Ryan Canizia. If you have heard, if of, you've him, heard of him, <laughs> it's not like he has designed uh, uh, 400 games or so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in that robbery, uh, you are supposed to be thieves that just finished the um, uh, the robbery. The robbery. You just yeah. done the looting, yes. and now you're trying to, you know, to divide, to split the loot, to split as much as you can without being caught. Yes, because basically the police is going to catch uh, the at the end of the round the thief with the least uh, alibi, right? So you try to collect alibi, but you try to collect loot. So effectively, if you go for big loot, you have little alibi, whereas if you go for uh, a smaller loot, you have uh, you more, uh, yeah, uh, more alibi. And I really like how the game... Like, Technically, though, you put you have some chips with numbers and dots. <laughs> some have dots, and the dots represent the alibis themselves. And you have the, the, the chips in the middle. And what you do is you play, you play a card, you pick a card, mm -hmm. right? And um, what you do is you play a card with, uh, let's say, a number four, and then you pick a number four chip. If another player plays a card number four again, and there are no number fours in the middle, what you do is you steal from your opponent. <laughs> it's so amazing. <laughs> and the thing is, though, the game, the round finishes whenever all the discs in the middle have been in, um, dispersed. Dispersed? Yes. That's a good word. And, I'm going to use that word. And basically, in the beginning, at the end of your turn, you may have some nice chips in front of you, like a five, a four, and a three. And you're and like, until, oh, that's until, me. And until your turn comes again, you have nothing. But you have also a dog who can protect your loot. Yeah, they protect yeah. the you can so you can get a dog and that protects you for one round. So you give your dog away instead of actually giving a loot. It's yeah. such a fun party game. Yeah, very I would, nice. I don't know if it's, a, if it's a party game, but it's definitely very good for people it's, that don't yeah. like board games or don't know board games. It's a filler for sure. Oh, such an incredible! Yeah. It's such a funny <laughs> game, proper funny, like ha 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 funny. <laughs> ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Definitely, <laughs> like I laughed when I played. Amazing All game. Right. <laughs> And then we played Transatlantic, hmm. and Transatlantic, it just happens that we... I want to say something else, but your fingers are moving, so please follow the link up there for <laughs> our comparison in between Concordia and Transatlantic if you would like to see the whole version and our whole discussion with uh, similarities and differences. In our versus series. But technically, Transatlantic is a game that is produced, believe it or not, after Concordia, and it's a game where you have ships and what you technically do in your shipyard you buy ships and you sell you get your ships to export coal technically that's what the game entails mm -hmm. um, and you can buy some more some more ships and that will you know give you more points at the end technically i think it has a very different way of scoring at the end which is unique for i've not seen this before where the the boat the first boat that has not been bought that needs discarding instead of being discarded gets put aside and you make set collections of different of, of the same colors and those will be added at the at the, the end scoring, score yes. which is quite yeah. different uh, basically uh the card play is exactly the same as concordia but i would say that concordia is by far the better game so i would say don't bother use uh, trying or uh, playing uh, transatlantic, go directly for Concordia. If, yeah. yeah. If if anything like that, you know, suits your fancy, just buy Concordia because it's definitely the better version. Exactly. Then we played uh, yet another Roll and Write. I don't know what we did and this month with yeah, these Roll and Writes. I think it's not even the last <laughs> on the list. I think we have another two to go. But anyway, we played another Roll and Write, uh, or Flip and Write in this case, it is. Um, it is called silver and gold. So we went for holidays in Greece, and every time we go for holidays, we want to buy from our holidays something, a small board game to come to bring back with us. We and have to mention that every time we go somewhere, holiday or no holiday, wherever there is a board game shop, we will be in it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> well, but what's what's so wrong? This is I'm not. I'm not. I, I, I don't, a souvenir at some point. I don't understand. <laughs> yes, I mean. <laughs> so we ended up buying silver and gold. And another game, which is Super Lucky Wars, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but Silver and Gold, which we played, it's a, a flip and write, where basically is the uh, flip and write version of Project L. So you have the polyominoes coming out of cards, and you have to put these polyominoes on your map to basically 
loot the treasures mm. and complete them up. It doesn't sound that exciting when you say it, but the yeah. game is pretty it's, fun. It's pretty nice. I really yeah. like it. The Very game nice. is really nice. And you only have a set amount of cards that come out. Mm -hmm. One every time will stay aside, so one of the polyomino pieces will be out. Yeah. You don't know which one that is. But you can only predict, oh, I really want this piece and probably will never come. But it's a super nice game. I really Very like good. it. I like it. And then we finally managed to get Oranian Burger Canal. Mm -hmm. Oranian Burger Canal, we we tried and tried, well you tried and tried to find it, and it finally arrived. Um, Oranian Burger Canal is a Nouvelle Rosberg game, and it's a two-player only game where you technically build the Oranian Burger Canal. Yeah. That's I mean, it. <laughs> it's very difficult to find because it's published by Spillworks, and they do one of runs, basically. One of prints, yes. And um, uh, it's a it's a two-player game, but it's a big box game, right? Mm. Uh, and it's I I think. Uh, do you want to hold on a minute? This is the game, mm -hmm. and it's quite for two players. It's quite heavy and quite big, isn't it? Yeah, yeah? it is. But it has a lot of replayability <laughs> inside. A lot of deck of cards, and basically you try to build your buildings, and build the paths, build canals, train tracks, uh, roads, etc., etc. And each building will activate exactly twice in the game. A maximum it, of twice. Maximum of twice. Whenever it is surrounded by roads or paths or canals, or whenever it has exactly two bridges connected. The second with bridge will activate buildings. it again, isn't it? Yeah. So it depends on you know whether you go for points or whether you want to go for activation because it has it has a juicy bonus when you activate it. And you have this very cool uh, resource wheel. Yes. That you have some resources on one side and some resources on the other side, and you can convert them as well. And it's apparently not the first game that Uber no. uses it this in. Glass Road has had the same uh, resource wheel, but it's the first time we play it with a resource wheel, and we find it very nice, very unique. Oh, well, you know, it's mm -hmm. every day is a learning day. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can uh, have a playthrough of Oranian Bay Canal soon for the channel. Yeah, that was our thinking as well, because it's a cool game and it's uh, not it's very interesting. It's not yes. very popular for whatever reason, yeah, I'm not sure why. It's not very easy to get your hands on it, that's why. Probably. Well, mm. we'll do a playthrough and then everybody will see. Yeah, <laughs> we'll show you. <laughs> Next we played Tricarion, The Legends of Illusion, and uh, it's our June game of the month, so yet again we have a link for you up there. <laughs> and Tricarion is... This is going to uh, become very boring very soon. I know. <laughs> or very entertaining. Yeah, and then imagine that I forget to put all the links of the videos up there. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no link up here, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so Tricarion is a big mind class game experience. It's such a good game. Like a, in a man, mind class yes, style, isn't it? Yeah, yeah style. like an acronym. Yeah. So you're a magician, you try to uh, uh, basically learn new tricks, then uh, collect material for the tricks, and then perform the tricks on a theater and trying to, to find the best spot to perform them, uh, you know, basically pushing elbows with your other magicians, fellows, and you're trying to collect fame and to collect money. Yeah, so technically fame is points at the end, and mm. this is what's going to make you win. And you have a bunch of different stuff that can help you aid and, you know, do all your tricks in there, right? Yeah, and art of the game is... Mm -hmm. This game is, it has like everything is top notch about this game from the production to the art to the trays. It's a, it's a very cool game, it's a very nice game. I thought it was a new game to be honest, and I don't know why I thought that. Yeah, apparently it's eight years old. Well, yeah. eight years is too old today yes. these days. Never mind, but still, it's a cool game. And during our last play session, we played mm -hmm. Twilight Inscription as well. And that was a pretty nice experience. Like as we were walking through, I think we had Twilight Inscription on our list for a very long time. And as we were walking through the convention, in the UKG, one of the yes. yeah, in UKG in June, one of the dudes there was playing. I think they were learning it on the spot as mm -hmm. well, which I thought it was mind blowing. <laughs> but he had it all open, and he was. They've already played a little bit of it, and it looked so super interesting. And then we bought it and we played it. And it was uh, a very good experience. So basically, in this game, you go through different planets, you do navigation, discover you planets, discover planets, mm. you populate these planets, you uh, fight your opponents in the war by building also military units and cruiser, cruisers and stuff like that, and you do some voting, some yeah, the decision yeah, making decision, there, and yeah. you also some uh, uh, trading and stuff like that. It's uh, such it's a got a complex game. rolling, right? Isn't it? Yeah, quite complex, right? You um, have four big sheets of like. If you've played Adrian's Wall, it's that size, but four of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I would easily play it again. Yeah, we just, we've not. I don't think because it's such a big game. Mm. I don't think we got 
the most of it so far but i think the more we play it the more you discover the combos right. and the better feeling it gives you mm -hmm. and also we played uh, stockpile this uh, quarter and stockpile is a very interesting um, lighter game on the lighter side but uh, it's very fun because basically what you do you're trying to outbeat your opponents and bluff them as well to get stocks and there is a uh, secret information there is information that only you know or only your opponents know so you can outplay your components or you can be outplayed basically mm -hmm. and you are trying to sell your stocks uh, high and buy the stocks low as the stock market game <laughs> yes so uh, it's it's quite fun you can also do uh, how it's called the the bonds you can buy the bonds as well right mm -hmm. uh, in the in the beginning of the round it's a such a cool game and uh, there's a bit of luck there. Yeah, yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. gets everybody gets a bit of hidden information. Yeah. Every every player gets two cards about a business and what happens to that business that 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 uh, round. Yeah. Whether it goes up, low, or whatever happens, or get dividends. Um, you have your own information, and mm -hmm. there's oh there's open information about one, and there's closed information about one. So you just have to guess what your opponents do yes, and yes. what's in your hand and what's open mm. to actually, you know, mm. is my opponent bluffing, is he not? All in all, though, it's a very funny game and it's a lot of luck in it, but I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Next, we played uh, Pioneer Rails, which is uh, our last <laughs> run right for this list. month. <laughs> Maybe flip and right again. Ah, dear yes. me. How and did we manage to do this? I know, right? And it's another game that was uh, uh, published by Dranda Game. Actually, it's not published yet. It will be delivered fulfilled in a few months' time. But we managed to get the print and play file from the publisher. Thank you very much. And we gave it a spin. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, the flipper right, you, you use basically a certain deck of cards. Mm -hmm. And you try to create uh, poker hands. And at the same time, you try to go around the map and uh, connect with different basically make connections, make, develop your route and connect with different buildings. Different cities as well, different cities, that will give you points at the end, exactly. yes. And uh, it's a, an interesting run and write, a, a different run and write I would say. It has also several maps that you can try. Yeah, that was a party race. And last but not least in our game, because we've literally just played it, well no, not no literally, least. but you know, it's, we just played it. <laughs> so what is it? Witchstone, uh -huh. I just, <laughs> did I not say that? <laughs> Did you? It's Witchstone? Yeah. It's a game by published by a guy called Ryan Canisia. I don't I'm not sure if you have heard of this guy. We yes. need to make a series of this guy yeah. because we played so many of his games. Mm. I mean we didn't play all four million hundred. Yes. Four hundred million gazillion. But we played plenty of them, so <laughs> we should probably do that. Yeah. Right. Who which one again? Which guy? <laughs> so technically you're a witch and you have your witch friends over there and you have your <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? How it's called uh, a group of witches? Coven? Yes, thank you. And you have a cauldron over there? It's yeah, a cauldron, yeah, right? Yeah, cauldron, yeah. And what you do, because you can see it from the top, that's your board technically. And then you have these two hex combined. I'm not sure how that form is called, or no. how that shape is called. Uh, I don't know, two hex. Oh, well, two no, hex, that's good two enough, hex yes. form. More like a polyomino kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? And your grid is made of hexes only. So what you tend, you, what you technically do is you try to connect these little four shapes to whatever you want to on your board. Technically symbols that are all on the side of the board, mm -hmm. and make combinations of actions to technically expand whatever you want. So for example, if you want to go for a witch action, the more polyomino tiles you put next to it, the better, the greater mm -hmm. the action will be. Which I think it's super cool. Mm. You have a lot of tracks over there. You have tracks to the left of the board where you put your sapphires, your stones, your stones, yes, your, your precious, gems. Yeah. Your gems. Um, it's technically, mm. you know, to make space on your board, you have to get rid of some uh, gems. And those gems, as soon as you get rid of them, they go on a track where you can take some bonuses. There is a wand at the bottom of the game, where at the bottom of the the wand. The one, yeah. Go, the one that's the bottom of the the board game. The game, the board of, of the game, of the board of the game. Of the board of the game of the board. Of the board. <laughs> the of, of the main board. There you go. <laughs> um, that is technically a track too, so you can go up that as well. You can get some cards, some extra cards that the you scrolls, can yes. you can buy, and they can give you some extra points at the end. Technically, it's a really fun game. But the the, the cool thing of the game, as Elena said, is this creating clusters of actions of the same symbols mm -hmm. to do bigger and more strong, stronger actions basically. Yeah, out of the blue you yeah, have exactly. an action, it's a six point action isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And you can, yeah, it's, it feels very nice. It's 
I think it's shorter than I wanted to. I could probably play it for longer, and it's not very heavy either. It's a very enjoyable game. Yeah, we should play again. Mm. So yeah, that's our list of games new to us that we played the last quarter. It's about I don't know, 20, 25 games that we enjoyed for the first time this quarter. And there was a rolling rides. It was a I didn't realize we played that many rolling rides. It's because we were traveling, basically. Yeah. Playing, yes. Yeah, that's and, fine. And we like our rides anyway, right? We had some big cool games like or running by canal or trikirion or asian railroads and revive but we also had and barrage barrage there are a lot of yes. big a lot games of big as well games, but a yeah. lot of yeah a lot but of running rides too. yes i mean we like playing i guess yeah <laughs> so let us know down in the comments what you played uh, uh, this last period uh, other old games or new games that uh, you liked a lot and what, yeah what's your highlight so that's from us today i hope you enjoyed our video Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye. Bye.